The NCAA Division I is the world's best hockey league which is not considered pro hockey. It's ideal to combine academics with hockey, as we see some outstanding school programs like Harvard, Yale and Princeton compete against some of the best hockey programs like Wisconsin, Boston College, Notre Dame and so on. The hockey level is amazing and we see some of the best NHL prospects play in this league. There's some state-of-the-art arenas on the campuses, which often seat over 10,000 people. The players have access to the best coaching, training facilities and so on. And the college life and the emotional fans are really making this an unforgettable experience. In the last two decades, the NCAA really did an amazing job in marketing this league and even increasing the hockey level, as we see an increasing amount of top NHL prospects like Jack Eichel play in this league. Many players and parents might think that all of the players in the Division I Hockey League get a full scholarship. Unfortunately, that's not true, as there is only 18 scholarships per team, which need to be divided between the players. The schools cost over sixty or $70,000, and the average scholarship is of only around $40,000. So the players need to expect to pay a lot of money to play in this league. Also, the players need to pass clearinghouse, which means that they can't play pro hockey before going to this league. The top feeder league to the NCAA Division I is the USHL, but there is also more good leagues to play in before going to this league, like the NAHL, BCHL and USPHL. There's a big debate whether the NCAA or the CHL is the better route to pro hockey, whereas the NCAA has the advantage of playing against older and more mature players, whereas the CHL has the advantage of playing a tougher game schedule. Our next interview will be with Thomas Di Paoli from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Thomas is the first Italian citizen to play in the National Hockey League. And it's going to be very interesting to listen to his story as he started out playing in Italy, then moved to Chicago to play in the Midgets Junior A with the US national team, and then also in the college level with Notre Dame. Hi Thomas, thanks so much for being here with us today. Nice to be here and joining you and I'm having fun talking to you. Yeah, so our first question will be, how did you uh, start off your hockey career in Italy and why did you move to the US? Uh, so, starting off in the best years in Kalton and Bozen, uh, playing, having fun, great uh, teammates and great just having fun on the ice and, and then getting the chance to play in Chicago Mission. Um, and yeah, fortunately living right next to the rink, so always walk to the rink and, and spend a lot of time on the ice. Yeah, you then moved on to play for the US national team in the USHL. How was the, the national development program run and was it an honor to play for a national team? Um, so I played with a couple of handful of really, really, really good players like Vinny Henestrosa, Ryan Hartman who played for Arizona and, and, and uh, Minnesota now. Um, they were my line mates in Chicago and then uh, we, we, we all went to, well Vinny didn't but Hartman made it then also with me at the USA program and we moved to Ann Arbor. Uh, Michigan and played there for two years for Team USA and that was that was the first time we're living away from home and uh, yeah it was fun it was fun and it grew a lot during those times. Was hockey always just a road to the NHL or did you also see it as a fun game that you just love to play with your friends? Um, I think it, it, the, 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 the determination and the dream of and the goal of playing in the NHL was always my number one thing ever since I was 10 years old. That's I think at, at the age of 10 is when I really wanted to become a, a player and, and make this a job. And so Chicago and the mission was was still it was fun development. And then once you get to the the national team, you play with players that everybody their everybody's dream is to play in the NHL. So it's 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 fun. There's a lot of camaraderie, um, but everybody's pushing to pushing hard. Everything you do is hockey related, and and to, to try to get to that to that goal. So it's fun, but it's very competitive, and uh, and it almost feels like a job that you're not getting paid for. 
um, because everybody is competing so hard. Since your goal was always to play in the NHL, why did you choose to go to college hockey and not major junior, which might have more games and so on? Um, so I was, I think I was still, I was with the mission, um, I think it was 14 years old when, when that's when colleges start um, talking to you. Um, and for me, it was always important to get an education with with hockey. So I decided that I mean Notre Dame is two hours away from Chicago, and it's it's an amazing school. And they were one of the first teams that were interested, and I knew friends that were committed there. So um, it was an easy decision for me to to go to that school. And yeah, it was it was amazing to to be part of that culture there. And throughout your junior career, uh, who took the contacts to the colleges? Did you have an agent or a family advisor? And uh, who helped you to get along with those contacts? Um, so it starts with, yeah, usually a family advisor. I know um, the, the agent that I'm with now, they approached my parents at a tournament and said, hey, we can advise, we can be your family advisor. Are you interested in that? And, and you kind of build a relationship and then the colleges talk to you but they can only do it a certain amount of times um, in the year and um, I think that's the rule and then so the agent talks to them and uh, is in contact and then they send you an invite to come visit their campus and usually what happens is you go to maybe one campus or you have an invite to go to a different campus too so you visit a few campuses and, and then you if you're if you're fortunate you, you get to pick um, the one you like the best. So once you're in college, you had to manage the school and the hockey. How was that managed? And do you think it was tough to coordinate both of them? Um, it is definitely. I mean, if you go to a school like Notre Dame, you are, you're, you're, you're. There's there's pressure in doing well in the classroom and also doing on the ice because it's such a big name and such a prestigious school. So it is. So usually the the schedules are. Uh, during the year, you take X amount of classes that you take all in the morning, and then at around, let me remember this correctly, at around one o'clock, you go to the rink and you have practice. Um, and yeah, so, and then what helps also with Notre Dame is you have summer school. So you always take, every summer you take two classes, so you have a smaller workload during the season, which helps um, to kind of have less classwork and focus more on hockey. So now looking back, you've made it to the top, to the National Hockey League. Do you think college hockey was the best preparation that you could have had? For me, it's, it was the right decision to go to a school like Notre Dame. I would, I would do the same thing over again. Um, however, I don't think that maybe... That, the route is different for everybody, I think. Um, I'm not going to say I that I believe everybody should go to college hockey because that's not what I believe, but I do believe that if you have importance and, and, and put importance towards school, that that's the best route because it's it's always good, in my opinion, to have a, a plan B if hockey, say, doesn't work out the way you want it to, put, to work out. So I say, why not get a good education and still play hockey? And what I think helped me and I see in other college players that move on to play in the NHL is you are physically more mature after college, mentally more mature, and you see a lot of NHL teams base their hockey culture around guys that have played college hockey because from what I've seen is the maturity aspect is, is elevated um, when you have to balance school and hockey. So if we compare the advantages of college hockey where it really disciplines you with time management and so on. With the advantages of Major Junior, where they have a lot of games, a tough schedule and so on. What do you think is better when you turn pro or go to the NHL? Again, I think it depends on, on, on the person. Um, as you said, there's, there's the benefit of playing Major Junior, OHL and, and those leagues is that you play more games. Um, and that could give you more of a benefit um, to getting used to that pro lifestyle of playing 80 games. But I think in college, the benefit is, like you said, the time management. I think that's important because I think that a good hockey player has to also be a good person. 
um, and a responsible person. And like I said, I think it's important to be able to manage your time away from the rink and also have something to do in pro hockey that makes you happy outside of the rink. In the last decade, we've really seen a big growth in the college hockey players that now play in the NHL. Do you think this is due to the better discipline and time management skills? Or do you think this is because the college hockey level increased within the last decade? I think the college hockey level has definitely gone up and you can see that with, with guys that, for example, Jack Eichel came into the league, played for BU, um, and he played for one year and then he went, made that step right to the NHL and had success. Um, other players, Jacob Chuba with Michigan, a lot of players go maybe one year, two years in college and I think the benefit that those players have is you come as an 18 year old and you play against 24, 25 year olds sometimes as a freshman against playing against a senior. So you have the advantage of playing against older players. Whereas if you go to the OHL, you don't have, I don't think necessarily that same age jump that could prepare you to play against a 30 year old that's an NHL veteran. So during or after your college hockey career, uh, did you get an agent to manage all your transfers? Um, so this, the family advisor that I had growing up at the mission. Um, so once I was at the mission, and my, my parents, like I said, got approached by a, a family advisor. And then once I finished with college, I was still with him. And that's when he became then officially my agent. And he... Uh, and he helped me out with all the contracts and he's and he's the guy who the agency calls all the, all the teams and, and finds the best contracts and, and does all that work. And now uh, one more question. Uh, once you really hit the ice in the NHL, a dream came through. Uh, so how, how was that big first step on the ice as an NHL player? It was, uh, it was I remember, so it was in Montreal. Um, and I had flown into Ottawa, met, met the team there. And then we went to Montreal, and um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was special. I mean, coach came up to me in the morning and said, "Hey, you're you're in." This is Coach Sullivan. He said, "This is probably one of the most special places to to have your NHL debut. So enjoy it and and have fun and play your game and and make a good impression." And I mean, that was one of the coolest words that I've ever heard. That was right after morning skate and. Uh, yeah, and then after that, your head starts going, and, and, and it's a feeling of a dream coming true. And like, like, like Coach said, I just tried enjoying it and, and keep my composure for the best I could. And uh, since you recently made the jump from the American Hockey League to the NHL, can you compare the hockey style in each league and if there's a big difference? Um, I think the biggest difference is stick positioning. Um, it's, it's not so much that you know skating all that there's there's some ahl players that easily could beat out ahl or nhl players but i think the difference is thinking the game at a higher pace and uh and i think that's the, the biggest difference is stick positioning gaps for defensemen um and just just slowing it down and, and playing your role instead of trying to do too much um, so it was yeah it was an amazing experience in montreal especially that first lap um, solo on the ice that, that yeah that was that was something i remember i uh i got everybody was getting dressed and i reached for my helmet and my helmet wasn't in my stall and then uh brian rust who, who i played at notre dame with um he uh, he said well get in the front of the line and and your helmet's gonna be waiting for you at the bench so i got out there alone and did some laughs shot some pucks and then went and got my helmet so that was that was one of the most special moments i think of my career and now, how about comparing the pro leagues to the college hockey league? In college, I think college hockey is pretty, there's some outstanding players. Um, obviously, you don't play as many games, so the playing style changes a little bit. When you, when you, when you have to play 80 games, you, I think, take care of your body a little bit differently than as opposed to when you play 30 games in college. But, like I said, I mean, there's more and more players that making that pro NHL jump from college hockey so it's it's really there's some teams out there now that that are growing and the facilities are remarkable in college hockey so I think it's a great place to to play so maybe to finish we can have a greeting to the Italian fans as well 
Love show. the Italian fans. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can't thank Italy enough for helping me to get here, especially the coaches, teammates. I mean, I, 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 I don't just say that, I really mean it that without my development and possibilities I had in Kalton, uh, Bozen, and the coaches and teammates, such as yourself and players I played against, that, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm forever grateful and. I would be an absolute honor to get a chance to play for Team Italy one day. Um, that's something that I, I hopefully, hopefully it happens because it would be special. So that was it from our part, Thomas. Thank you so much for being here for us today. It was very nice talking. So that was it for Thomas. It was really interesting to see how he chose the college route, but still made it to the very top. So this underlines the great improvements that the college hockey has done in the last decades, whereas more and more players choose that route to reach then the NHL.